Well, today we remember Constance and her companions, also called the Martyrs of Memphis. I wonder if anybody knows the story. Okay, one or two people do. Well, we can hear it again on this occasion because it's worth retelling. It's a good story when I'm wearing either of my hats, either my church hat or my public health hat. You may know that Memphis is right on the Mississippi River, and so for much of its history until well into the 20th century, disease tend to move up and down the river as much as cargo did. And so Memphis, being not that far upriver from New Orleans and other places in the further south, uh, had outbreaks of cholera and yellow fever in particular. And there was one in 1878, which is the occasion of the story that we are uh, here thinking about today. Some years before that, the Bishop of, I guess that would be Bishop of Tennessee, West Tennessee, thank you, uh, asked a group of religious sisters from New York to come and start a school connected to the cathedral in Memphis, which they did. And so in 1878, when this outbreak began in the summer, many of these religious sisters had already gone back to New York to their mother house, and so they weren't even in Memphis when it started. But they heard about it and got on the train and went back to Memphis in order to see what they could do to help. In the end, what they did was they turned their school into a hospital. Now, bear in mind that uh, as was often the case in big cities and outbreaks of disease through the centuries, many of those who otherwise would have been helpful on this occasion had fled town. It's said that, that several thousand people who were able to, because of their wealth or their position, got out of town to wait it out somewhere else. So these women who were not trained as, not, as, as nurses, bear in mind, they were trained as teachers, came back, they were joined by a few doctors who had remained in town and a couple of priests, one of whom was from Memphis and another who was also from New York and had come down for this purpose. They spent that summer, August and sept into September, nursing the population. It was said that by the end of the outbreak, 90% of those in the city had become infected. And countless people died including four of the religious sisters, both of the priests, and obviously many, many others who were taking care of other people. So they were remembered down to this day as the martyrs of Memphis. There's a, a lovely memorial to them in the cemetery where they're buried. The altar in the cathedral is dedicated to the religious sisters. Uh, and we remember this to this day. It's something that happened right here among us. And not that long before we figured out what to do about this. Interestingly, even while this outbreak was happening, there was a physician in Cuba who was figuring out how yellow fever was spread. And it was only 25 years later that Walter Reed and some of his colleagues confirmed that theory and figured out how to treat it. So this is very much at the tail end of these terrible events. And yet here we have this one example, at least, that we can hold on to. And there are things to see in this, I think, that are important for you and for me. I mean, first, these women did what they could. As I said, they did not have medical training. They probably didn't have indoor plumbing in this school where they were treating people. This was 1878. It's unlikely. They certainly didn't have electricity. It was the summer in the south. It must have been brutally hot. And yet they did the best that they could with the resources they had been given. We shouldn't overlook the fact that they actually went to danger. They were safely somewhere else, and they went right into the middle of it. And in the end, what they are remembered for is their small acts of mercy rather than for the, the, the church they built, the, the things they wrote, the, the sort of grand gestures that we imagine. These, I think, if we stop and ponder them, are all lessons for us. Maybe it's not the grand gestures that matter in our lives either, but the small gestures of mercy that add up over time. Maybe it doesn't matter whether we feel that we have all of the resources that we need, although, in fact, we do. I think perhaps there's even something to be said for finding yourself in the absence of everything you might want to have in order to accomplish the task. It's a really useful way to see through 
the illusion of our own competence and recognize how much we truly, truly do depend on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in everything that we do, whether we think of it as religious or not. And that in the end, what we build is not a grand facade, but rather is something very simple and very modest that nonetheless is the true work of God. So Constance and her companions, may their memory be a blessing to us and also an inspiration. Amen.